so it's been a couple of weeks and uh, yeah, I've been programming, uh, doing the menu thing. Anyway, I sold a lot of things and now the rotary encoder is perfect. Look, <laughs> before it was like it kind of worked and now I can click it and then it can go f 5 milliamps at a time. Now I have a menu system. And uh, and you hold button to enter the option. So this is a second menu. Yeah. So this is the list mode. So you can press load on, and it will start. So let me show you how that works. Just click it. How many in the list do you want to? Uh, by the way, this is uh, partly the ori original code from uh, Skullcom. So, so 1.1 amperes at one second, and then half a second, or let's say two seconds, like that. And then I can get a little start. And you can see how it works every second. For every instruction is shown here, and the uh, approach. Okay, so I can press it again. I can reprogram it or configure it. If I hold the button, I go into user setup or limits, so I can set the limits again. Again, this uh, rotor encoder is very nice now. So yeah, hold it to get out of that, and I can go to exit. Hold it. Then we're back to main menu and then CC. And we're back to CC or constant current. As you can see, I have mounted up a heatsink for this uh, DC load. I have also put it on a bed, sort of, just to have it everything together so I can move everything around. It's not supposed to sit like this, and it's not supposed to have these wires either. But it's just for now, see how it works. Load sharing and everything. So, so yeah. You can see in the middle of the picture there. This is 4.096 volts, and that one reads two and a half because I've used the wrong voltage reference. So I ordered a new one. Uh, so meantime, I've just uh, manually entered the code here. Set the current calibration factor for now. But do this thing even work? So. Yeah, you can press here, and uh, you can set the uh, amperage. So you have to turn on the power supply. Uh, in the beginning, I set it to limit at uh, 100 milli ohms because then I didn't have a heatsink. Now I set it to one amperes. Amperes. It's supposed to go up to three, I think, and 30 volts, so 90 watts. Anyway, so let's see what we have okay we need to turn it on there you go see if we can get both of them in shot there you go 0.9 when 9 is not precise yet but you see it does follow so you can turn it down click it to get better precision Yeah, so obviously it needs calibration. It seems to be working fine. Click it, get up to one amperes. Well, the power supply uh, limits, so let's back off. And there you go. So the way I mount this is by mica pads, or is it silicon pads? I don't know. So these are the resistors, and also, if I measure here, I can see that the load balancing is working perfectly. So the way you can see that, I can show you. So to show you this, I will measure over the uh, sharing resistors, or the shunt resistors here. Right now it's zero. They are 1 ohms, so the relationship between voltage and uh, current is 1 to 1. So 
1 volt is 1 ampere. I have the grounding measurement on ground here on the uh, sensor resistor. And uh, let's turn on the load. It's 0.9 amps, something like that. So if I measure here, I should see a bit more, but I, does, I don't. That's weird. Okay, let's try the other one. Oh, yeah, I see what's going on here. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, let's try the other side. Yeah. Yeah, so what I'm measuring here is uh, the voltage drop of these resistors. And you see it's about half the current in both of them. But it's more, so what is that current? Not sure. But 0.567 on the one to the left and on the right 0.562. So about half an amp on both of those transistors there. So if I had all four it would be 0.25 of each of them if the load balancing is working perfectly. But it is, so that's great. So now if you want to dissipate 90 watts it will be 90 watts divided by 4, which is perfect. <laughs> I was wondering why I got this measurement when I had 0 0.9 and divided by 2 that is certainly 0.45 or something like that. I moved the ground connector from here over to there so there's some drop going on here I think something is happening here with a diode or something. So I will have to check the schematic but if I measure it now it's 0.47 let's try the other one see 0.46 that's uh, almost uh, an equal amount of current in both of those two resistors, meaning the current is the same in both of these two. So, perfect. So, what's the voltage of them? Let's see. Um, I think I have to. There. See the current voltage in. It's the middle one, I think. No, is it this one? That's really weird. No, oh, it's... Yeah, sometimes I have a hard time getting a good connection when I put the uh, probe here. So, let's try it again. There you go. Uh, oh, two volts. That's probably the gate. Ah, 3.8 volts in on that uh, guy there. So I see now what I did wrong. Uh, I put the probe here and not here because I wanted to measure the current through those uh, sharing resistor stairs. So basically, the best thing is put it directly over, right? But I put it down here instead of here. <laughs> so the sensor resistor, I, I got the voltage drop of the shunt resistor and the sensor resistor. So let's have a look at the shunt resistor voltage then because that is also interesting. Now it probably will be negative because I have it the negative on the wrong side. Maybe. If I lose this polarity I can take it in my head so easy. <laughs> so let's turn it up to 0.9 see let's try to get it up to so it says one amps there yeah so that's close enough 0993 so, so let's see what this uh, shunt measures oops let's see it measures 0 0.1 almost so what do you get? The current is uh, voltage divided by resistance. So if we measured 0.1, divide that by 0.1, you get 1, which is 1 amperes. I think this meter is not showing correctly. This one, however, is showing 0.999. I think this one is actually quite 
precise, so I'll have to do some measurements. I have the C64 saver connected up here to the DC load, and currently it's not calibrated. However, if you watch this number, it's pretty accurate. So let me just show you on the meter, which is connected to the um, shunt resistor. So let's put it up to 100 milli. Yeah, turn on the output. I need to restart the. Uh, yeah, put on power. Then restart. So, there we go. So, here we go. Uh, so, let's wind it up. Oops. Okay, so let's wind it up to like 200 or something. Turn on the load. So, about there. So just, just to show you that this part is uh, very accurate. So, 202 measuring over the uh, sensor resistor there. And we get oh, 020, which millivolt. We can set it to millivolt. I can see. 20.2, which is 202 milliamps. I have a problem with this uh, DC load that when I turn it on like this and and when it's ready and I turn on the load to say 500 milliamps there's nothing so still nothing So then I start to uh, measure. Now you see the setting is half an amp and it's nothing on the output. So let's check the gates and they are negative. So uh, then we have a pointer that says drive and that is the output of the rational amplifier going to the gates. And that's actually working. See if I, uh, I, I don't know if I can do it with one hand, but you can see it follows if I twist this one. So that works. Now if I move it over to J10, we can see we got the zero there. So here you can see the gates. Uh, this is J10. We saw that I was zero. This one I was actually negative because of this negative supply. So this one was practically dead, but this one did work. So something is going on on this side. And this one is the easiest one to check. And uh, I was thinking, oh, where does that come from? Uh, does it come from the microcontroller? No. So it comes from this auto load off at switch on circuit. Now the auto load of a switch on circuit is uh, there to um, prevent the output from going on at power on. And uh, very typical, they use a capacitor to charge up. Um, you can imagine that capacitor there is uh, zero. It's basically clamping the base of that transistor up to 5 volts, meaning that it's turned on. So load off is actually pulled up, and when that one is pulled up, uh, when you pull a negative input up, the output will go low, so basically turning it off. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, high impedance. Yeah, so as I said, it's a very typical circuit, and this one charges up gradually, and after a while, it got, uh, the base voltage is below um, the base emitter voltage and then it turns off so why doesn't it turn off so let's have a look at the meter if I measure that I just need to connect it again and uh, prepare the camera so let's have a look at this point now let's set it to half an amp again this is a bit between takes. Ok, 
Okay, load set to half an amp, still nothing on the output. So let's have a look. Um, yeah, you can see there, <laughs> there's a missing resistor, actually. You can see there, R41 is missing. So, that capacitor uh, doesn't charge, or does it? So let's see, because it has worked before. But look, when I measure the capacitor, or the negative input of the capacitor, you can see it's dropping. And that's why it starts working after a while. <laughs> so if you follow this, I don't know if it's dropping because of uh, me measuring it, or probably not, because it starts working. So let's just speed up the video, we'll see. There you go, you can see it's starting to ramp up there, the power supply. And we are closing... Uh, and we are getting close to the base voltage, going base emitter voltage going down to 0.7 or something, which means that it turns off. Well, it doesn't turn off, it goes gradually, or exponentially, so... Yeah keeps going, keeps discharging, or actually it's charging, the capacitor is charging because it's connected to the negative lead now, so, so there you go, so we'll keep uh, going until it uh, reaches the set point. Yeah. So there you also can see that a base uh, input of a transistor the base emitter voltage is 0.7, it's not an uh, on or off situation, it's uh, a lot in between, actually, so... Yeah, so, but it's a very... this uh, op-amp is very sensitive also, so... So, I think I can keep going. Seems to have stopped, almost stopped there. Yeah, so I'll just put a resistor in there and it'll probably be fine. 